So you are not allowed to dip into your EPF savings, but you can use it as a support to get a loan? Is that genius or just a bad idea? According to the website, the Account 2 Support Facility FSA2 is aimed at enabling EPF members to make advanced application for each 50 or 55 conditional withdrawal in obtaining a personal financing from banking institution. Okay, let's look at how it works. EPF members between age 40 until below 54 years old can now consider applying for a personal loan up to 50,000 for selected banks by using their money in EPF account 2 as a support. This whole deal is actually between you and the selected bank. And the good news is the financing rate charged by the participating bank under this program will range from 4 to 5%, which is much more lower and much more affordable than the market rate of 8 to 15%. Actually, it's just like any other bank loan. Nah. The bank will evaluate your current situation before approving your loan and you will still need to repay your loan via monthly installments to the financing bank but because it's under the FSA2 facility you will get a much better rate compared to personal financing that is not under this facility and if you prefer you can use the money in account too to clear the loan balance via an advanced application of conditional withdrawal subject to the member's choice of withdrawal age so now some of you may be wondering why doesn't the government just allow EPF member to withdraw money directly. Isn't that more straightforward? The money is theirs anyway, right? Well, to better understand this, let's look at some numbers. Let's say currently you're 45 years old and you have 50,000 in your account too. You have two options to withdraw this 50,000 or take a 10 year loan worth 50,000 using FSA2. If you withdraw, you get the money, but your account tools balance will be zero. What happens is you will solve your problem now, but 10 years later at age 55, when you look into your account too, it's still going to be zero. Now your retirement is going to be a problem. Let's take a look at scenario two. What happened is that you get 50,000 ringgit via a loan with MBSB, one of the participating banks. And we managed to get their repayment table here. As you can see, the first 12 months, you need to make a monthly repayment of 187 ringgit and 50 cents. The remaining 13 months to 120 months, you need to make a monthly repayment of 564 ringgit a month. The total amount paid after 10 years will be 63,162 ringgit. But since it's a loan, this means that your account too will still have that 50,000 ringgit and you will continuously receive a dividend of around 5% annually for 10 years. 10 years later, at 55 years old, your accumulated amount in account too will be 81,444 ringgit. This is assuming that you have been making your monthly repayments la. But if not, you will have to use this money to pay off the loan that you have borrowed earlier. Even if you minus this loan amount, roughly you will still have some surplus, right? 81,000? 63,000. Based on these numbers alone, which do you think is better? Well, I prefer the later. But tell us what do you think in the comments below. Since COVID pandemic, government has allowed people to dip into their retirement savings. There are other countries who did the same, but Malaysia was the only country that allowed four times withdrawal. This means when other countries have stopped this withdrawal facility, we actually continue with it for some time. Desperate times calls for desperate measure, right? But this is gonna lead us to another big problem. You see, after four withdrawals, a total of 145 billion ringgit has been withdrawn to date. That's equivalent to 4,500 ringgit withdrawal for each Malaysian. Many people's accounts are left with less than 10,000 ringgit. It may not look like a big issue now, but it's going to be a really big issue in future. And it's likely harder to fix this problem at that time. Just imagine this, a large retired population with no incomes and no savings. What are we going to do? Where are we going to find the resources to support them? Who's going to pay for it? Well, I know the answer. It's going to be you via higher taxes. 
and I can tell you, no one wants that. My personal opinion is this. This may not be the perfect solution, but it's probably the better option right now, since it allows financially distressed members to secure some funds while still protecting their retirements in the process. One more thing that I thought it's pretty good was that every member who wants to apply for this will have to undergo a financial awareness assessment with the banking institution before deciding to take on this personal financing. This way, they are also able to filter out people who are really in need versus those who simply want to withdraw their money money for shopping spree or holiday. Ultimately, for those who are seriously in need of money, this financing will solve at least half the issue. For those of you who want to find out more and apply for this FSA too, all you need to do is go to this website, check out your eligibility, read up the FAQ to have a better understanding and select your preferred participating bank for the financing. One more thing, remember to apply for the loan with the lowest financing rate, okay? Lastly, I know some of you here are thinking about taking out this loan to invest. Well, my thoughts, if you can, avoid it. Because the money in EPF is already giving a pretty decent return with capital guarantee. If you really want to, maybe you can take it and reinvest back to EPF to give you more returns. Oh yeah, this is not a financial advice, okay? So tell us in the comments what you think about FSA too. And if you have any ideas for our next video, things that you want us to talk about, tell us in the comments as well. I'll see you next week.